I think this is the tensest moment I have ever known in motorcycle racing because, as you've heard from David, those two superstars of motorcycle racing, Kenny Roberts and Freddie Spencer, are going to ride out to the World Championship today. We must not lose sight of the fact that Randy Mamola there, the American on the Suzuki, who is fourth fastest in practice, could offer a very real challenge, although he's had big trouble with his right hand and the right side of his body, and he has been having massage right up to a few moments before he came out. And Marco Lucinelli, who it is rumored will not be riding for Honda next year, and is the 1981 world champion, is more than anxious to do well in front of his idolatrous home crowd on what may be his last ride for Honda. And he did very well in practice because he was third fastest. 36 riders in this event, 15 points for a win in the World Championship here, down to 1.4 tenth place. The race over 25 laps of this three miles course, just over three miles, and as you can see there is an absolutely enormous crowd here. The warm-up lap has been completed, the tyres are warmed, Freddie Spencer, who is right there in second position on the grid, is as cool as a cucumber, this 21-year-old man, quite incredibly relaxed. And so, of course, is the three times world champion, Kenny Roberts, who's done it all before. There are Mamola, number six. Number 27 is Roberts' teammate, Eddie Lawson, who's got a big load to carry because he's got to try and get ahead of Spencer and stay there. Lucky is Marco Lucinelli, number five, on the Honda. So in pole position, it is a Yamaha of Roberts. They're bad starters, the Yamaha. So watch Roberts on the right, and away streak the Hondas. A superb start, and Roberts, sure enough, is left at the start. And as they come up to the first corner, the Tamburello tightly bunched. It's Ron Haslam, the British rider, who's got away tremendously well and is up towards the lead. Now, they have to go round here towards the Retifilio and then up to Tosa, which is a left-hand bend, and it's Freddie Spencer and Marco Lucinelli, and there, number 35, alongside them, yet another of the Hondas, it's Ron Haslam. So, Hondas are first, second, and third, and already Kenny Roberts is recovering from that bad start. He is in fourth position. Battle is joined. 25 laps, only five points separate the World Championship leader, Kenny Roberts, but there is Freddie Spencer, who told me yesterday he would be content, if necessary, to stay in Roberts' wheel tracks, but it's Haslam now, well up with Freddie Spencer, there is Roberts, but Lucinelli is still sandwiched between the Hondos of Freddie Spencer, the leader, and Ron Haslam in second place. Now watch the style of Spencer, followed by Lucinelli. Now Lucinelli's got a lot to prove, and number four, Kenny Roberts is up into third place. Down to fourth goes Haslam. In fifth place, it looks like Raymond Roche. In sixth position is Eddie Lawson on the second of the two works Yamahas. Down to the Revanza, the double left-hander, which they exit at about 115 miles an hour, accelerate to 130 miles an hour, down to the Varianta Fassa. This is the end of lap one in this 25-lap race. Kenny Roberts is in fourth place. The leader is still Spencer. Second is still Lucinelli. Roberts is third now. There you see the red and white Yamaha V4. And you just see Roberts riding out of picture. There go Haslam and Eddie Lawson as the leaders come now up to the Tamburello. This is a 170 mile an hour stretch. There's Haslam behind him. Lawson, Mamala is only in about eighth position as they go up to the Reticilio. Down through the gears from sixth to first as they come up to this very tight left-hander. And it's Spencer, Lucinelli, Honda, leading Honda, both works riders. If Lucinelli can stay with Spencer, is he going to try and get past him in the later stages of the race? Well, it's still Kenny Roberts in third position, and Barry Sheen is up into about 15th position. And he started right down the grid in 27th place. Into the Aqua Minerale, that artificial chicane. It's Spencer, it's Lucinelli, it's Roberts, first, second and third. 
the rest of them streaming through now from the aqua minerale they go to the varianta alta this is another chicane that they're coming to now and very very tight there for spencer lucinelli goes through and spencer is easing away now now freddie spencer will know that after his terrific start which he's done many times before leaving kenny roberts he's got to try and keep ahead because Roberts is gaining, you can see that. We're on the second lap now, almost at the end of it, and you can see for yourselves, visually, the gap between the race leader, Freddie Spencer, the young American on the Honda, Kenny Roberts, who is 31 years old, riding the Yamaha, and it's still Lucanelli between them, and the gap between Spencer in the lead and Roberts in second place is 2.07 seconds. Two laps completed in this 25-lap race. Now, there's Roberts. This tremendously cool customer, Roberts. And there is the battle for fourth position. And it's Lawson. Lawson up into fourth place with Raymond Roche. And Haslam is down into about eighth position. And on the third lap then, it's Spencer there, Lucinelli there, Roberts. And then behind Roberts in fourth position, it is Raymond Roche in fifth position. But now he's in fourth because he's passed him. It's Eddie Lawson. Then in sixth place is Mark Fontaine, the Frenchman on the Yamaha. And in sixth position is Ron, seventh position, it's Ron Haslam, followed by Randy Mamola. So it looks as though Randy Mamola's problem is striking him already. And there is Kenny Roberts gaining on Marco Lucinelli, the American catching the Italian, the V4 Yamaha. All these machines produce about 130 brake horsepower and they only weigh some 220 pounds, so there is an absolutely fantastic power-to-weight ratio, and they're doing about 170 miles an hour on the fastest part of this course, and the gap between Freddie Spencer and Kenny Roberts is now down to 1.83 seconds. Roberts is gaining. Lap three down to the Rivazza again. It's a first gear corner as they go into it. They accelerate up very quickly to second to third, then into fourth, where Lucanelli is now doing about 130 miles an hour, then immediately back into third gear for the, for the Varianta Bassa and into second for the Traguardo, which they're coming out of now. And you can see that Kenny Roberts is catching Lucanelli, and look at the gap between Roberts in third position and the fourth place man, Raymond Roche, the Frenchman, and he's doing superbly well. He's on a work, proper works machine for the first time in his Grand Prix racing. That's number 36 when you see it, the Honda of Raymond Roche riding this three-cylinder works machine. There he goes, 16-inch wheels. He's not used to those. And Kenny Roberts is ahead of Lucinelli into second place, and this is exactly what we expected, a poorish start for Kenny Roberts, who has methodically worked his way through the field. Now he is setting about catching Freddie Spencer, the man who is leading the World Championship by five points. 15 points for a win, 10 points, 12 points for second place, 10 points for third position. Number four, Kenny Roberts, three times world champion, 22 Grand Prix he has won in his 13 years of racing and he's won five Grand Prix this year to the sixth of Freddie Spencer. There is Spencer. Now he's approaching the Varianta Alta, second gear. Roberts, Lucinelli, behind Lucinelli in fourth position now. It is Eddie Lawson, so both the Yamahas are in the top four. Then it's fifth, Raymond Roche. Then it's sixth, Mark Fontaine. Spencer, Roberts, Lucinelli, Honda, Yamaha, Honda, a roar of approval from the crowd when they hear on the public address system that Kenny Roberts has moved up into second place. He is tremendously popular here, but so too is Freddie Spencer. And the gap now is 1.48 seconds. Second, Roberts. Third, Lucinelli. We wait for Raymond Roche to appear. You'll see him in the background as the first three accelerate through. And these competitors have been racing in South Africa and all through Europe in what has been one of the most exciting Grand Prix seasons of all time. 
And as you have heard, and must have read ad nauseam, because it's really gripped the world's imagination, these two men that you're looking at now, Freddie Spencer, 21 years old, and Kenny Roberts, have between them won all the Grand Prix that have been held this year. And Lucinelli has been sadly out of the picture, the man we're looking at now. But Lucinelli, who lives only a few hundred yards from the circuit here at Imola, and was, believe it or not, recently refused entry by a gatekeeper because he hadn't got his pass. <laughs> Everybody says they're Lucinelli, he says, but this was Lucinelli. And he really gets a tremendous dose of extra adrenaline when he's appearing in front of an, of an Italian crowd, and he's showing it today. So, Spencer leads, Robert second, McGainey. Lucinelli is in third position. In fourth place, it is Eddie Lawson. In fifth place, it is Raymond Roche. In sixth position, it is Randy Manola. In seventh position, and pushed down one place, Mark Fontan. In eighth place, it is Ron Haslam. And in ninth place, behind Ron Haslam, the Dutchman, Bert Van Dolman on a Suzuki. Spencer and Roberts. You can see Roberts is inching up on Freddie Spencer's rear wheel all the time. I don't imagine that Spencer is going to fight perhaps as, as hard as he might have done in previous races to keep Roberts back because he knows full well that to win the world championship which matters to him more than the race itself he has only got to keep Kenny Roberts in sight assuming that Roberts is leading and if Spencer can do that he's going to be I think the youngest 500cc world champion of all time as we look at Marco Lucinelli and we are now on lap six out of 25 in this San Marino Grand Prix. Now look for the gap between these two and watch for the styles. Three cylinder, two stroke, the Honda, four cylinder, V, uh, the V engine on the Yamaha, also a two stroke, and there's Lucinelli. Lucinelli's not looking nearly as steady on the bike as uh, Spencer. And Eddie Lawson now is starting to catch Lucinelli. And Lawson has actually been given an instruction by the Yamaha team with Roberts, as you can well see, gaining on Spencer all the time. Lawson's challenge is somehow, assuming Roberts is in the lead, to get ahead of Freddie Spencer and stay there. It's rather like telling me to get in front of Steve Ovet and stay there because... Uh, Lawson, good as he is, is not in the same class as Freddie Spencer. But if he could do that, he would deny Spencer the world championship. That is Marco Lucinelli in third place. Approaching the downhill section to the Rivazza. Lucinelli dropping back. Lawson catching him. Ahead of Lucinelli, Roberts in second place, catching Spencer as they come through to complete that six out of 25. And hopefully there's going to be 100% machine reliability. There has been virtually all season. The bikes are very, very reliable indeed. They have been lovingly prepared, of course, by the Honda mechanics and the Yamaha mechanics to make sure that they are absolutely right for this, the most critical race of the year. And as usual, Spencer and Roberts are in a class of their own, unusually. Number five, Marco Lucinelli is up with them because usually he's been around 7th and 8th places in the Grand Prix this year. The highest he's had his second place, and now battle is well and truly joined. Number three, Freddie Spencer. Number four, Kenny Roberts. Spencer looks over his shoulder, and there is the grim visage of Kenny Roberts looking at him through the perspex visor of his helmet. And look at the red machine and levers of Eddie Lawson. And he is catching Marco Lucinelli. These two, Spencer and Roberts, putting on the sort of show appropriately in the last World Championship 500cc Grand Prix of 1983 that they have been putting on all over Europe and South Africa all season. These two men are really in a class of their own. Watch their knees. Watch how those abrasion pads that they've got on their knees slide along the ground and that's when they know that they can heal the bike over no further. Spencer, Roberts, under the bridge, down to the river. So this is where Roberts could try to go through as they come out. And of course, it's, it, if you 
got the right line and a bit more power, you it's easier to get past on a bike than it would be in a car, because, of course, they occupy much less room on the track. Into the very end, the better out of the Traguado, second gear, 95 miles an hour, accelerate up. Second, third, fourth, fifth gear, sixth gear, as they go into the Tamburello here. And look for Lucinelli in the background, and maybe, yes, now we're going to see Marco Lucinelli, and we'll see how, it's Lawson. Law Lawson is coming up to catch Lucinelli. There is Lucinelli. Now the gap between Lucinelli and Lawson is definitely shrinking. And Robert is in the lead on lap eight of this 25 lap race. Kenny Robert has achieved his first goal. That is to get in front of Freddie Spencer. His second goal must be to stay there. And the team has a goal, and that is to get Lawson ahead of Lucinelli, to get Lawson ahead of Spencer. And this proves, without a doubt, I think, that as we expected, the Yamaha, which was fastest in practice, went round at 99.34 miles an hour in the hands of Kenny Roberts, and that was exactly two three miles an hour faster than the previous lap record held by Marco Lucinelli, which must already have been smashed. And as we look at Roberts and Spencer, numbers four and three, in third position it is still Lucinelli, in fourth position it is still Lawson and Gage. Looks as though Roberts is going to be denied his great ambition to go out at the top by winning the 1983 World Championship. He's done everything that he was expected to do, he was fastest in all the practice sessions. He was some three miles an hour faster than the lap record of Marco Lucinelli. After a bad start, he fought his way through the people in front of him and got ahead of his arch rival number three. Spencer, look for number 27, Lawson in third position. He's got a couple of tail enders in front of him as he rounds the Rivazza. Now look for number five, there he is, Marco Lucinelli in front of his home crowd wanting so much to do well because it is generally believed that uh, Honda will be parting company with Lucinelli at the end of this season. He's been a disappointment to them, the 1981 world champion. And you see Robert Spencer and Lawson on the finishing straight together because as Roberts went into the Tamburello there, Lawson was uh, coming out of the Traguado. And those are the two corners at the two ends of the start and finish straight but there's no way that Lawson's going to be able to catch Freddie Spencer the second of these two riders in second place who is on course for the world championship of 1983 because Roberts and Spencer are now on lap 24 out of 25 Yamaha leads on the second there is Lawson the, the leader of these three he's lapped the other two and there is Lucinelli, who is dropping back in fourth position. And for the record, of course, it's very important. In fifth position, behind Marco Lucinelli, it's Raymond Rush. In sixth position is Randy Mamola. In seventh place is Mark Fontan. So it's a sprinkling of Hondas, Suzukis and Yamahas. And the riders see that board, of course. Into the Varianta Alta. Roberts, Spencer, watch the knees, that's the signal to the rider when he feels his knee dragging along the ground on the corners that he can heel over no further. Roberts has suffered the frustrating experience of doing everything that he could possibly do and yet not be able to shake off Freddie Spencer. And I think probably Spencer has settled for second now He's got, he's got the gap being given to him by the Honda team. His team manager, Charlie Heineken, and the important Japanese who are over here, leaning over the pit rail, knowing that if Spencer finishes where he is now, and he is on his last lap with Kenny Roberts, he will not only be the world champion, the youngest ever in the 500cc class, but he will clinch the world championship in the constructors section 
four Honda, and they have never in all their long years of racing won a 500cc world championship in the constructors' class, even when Mike Halewood was riding for them. So, up from the Tamburello to the Tosa bend, up, up over the crest, into the left-hander, underneath the bridge, fifth gear, 150 miles an hour, down to the left-hander, There's Roberts. Out of the Aqua Minerale. Up the hill. Now to the Varianta Alta. This is the highest part of the course. Under the bridge, into the little chicane. Roberts leads. Spencer second. It's going to be a Roberts victory. He's going to equal the number of wins that Freddie Spencer has had as... Roberts passes Leandro Vecheroni, the Italian rider. They go down now, down to the Rebatza, the double left-hander. First gear, quickly up into second, then to third, 115 miles an hour. Out of it at 130. And there's Eddie Lawson in third position. They are now virtually within sight of the chequered flag. They being Kenny Roberts there, number four on the red and white Yamaha. Number three, Freddie Spencer on the Honda. Into the last right-hander. He's done it. He's won it. Almost. Kenny Roberts has won the San Marino Grand Prix on his Yamaha, but the world champion in the 500cc class for 1983 on the Honda, and a very worthy one is the man who is waving there, Freddie Spencer, in third position in the San Marino Grand Prix, Eddie Lawson on the Yamaha. Fourth is Marco Lucinelli. Fifth will be Randy Mamola. And sixth will be Mark Fontaine. A truly stirring race.